Welcome to the Knapsack Foundation Shelter Sandbox Advanced User Video. In this video, we'll show some helpful tips and tricks for those users that want to really dig into the tool. We're going to go ahead and start with the attribute table. You can view the attribute table many ways, but the easiest way is to click this arrow button at the bottom of the screen. This attribute table is going to show you all pieces of information, in this case shelters, that are visible on the map. This attribute table will change based on what's visible. For example, if I zoom in just to Colorado, it's only going to show one shelter. If I go ahead and do the default map extent, it's going to show all of the shelters that are shown here. You could drag this up and you could do a lot of cool things with the attribute table. The most interesting thing that you probably want to do with shelters is start sorting by specific capacity. This is going to show all of the pieces of information in all the fields for shelters. If you go ahead and scroll to the right, you could start filtering by total capacity. You can do ascending or descending. Here you can look and see which ones have the highest capacity and you might want to start sending po folks to those locations. Go ahead and play around with the attribute table and do different filter options in here. If there were supply caches on the map, that also has its own attribute table associated with it. The next tool we're going to cover is adding custom filter expressions. At the bottom of the filter application is a create custom filter. Go ahead and click on that. Here you could choose where you want the custom expression to run. We're going to choose instant data shelters. Go ahead and add a custom expression or a set. A set is multiple ifs and thens, but let's just do a single one for now. We're going to go ahead and add an expression, and we're going to again look at total capacity. So we're going to scroll down to the field, which is total capacity, and then you could choose multiple options, but we're going to say is at least. So we want to look for a total capacity for shelters that is at least 100. We saw before that this is probably going to filter out some information, so let's go ahead and click off and it filters out the two other shelters that didn't have at least 100 uh, total capacity. This is also a good way to see what shelters meet your criteria during shelter and operations. Next, we're gonna cover advanced share options. You could go in here and copy the share link to this app and it will show everyone this application. But if you wanna point them to a direct location, go ahead and click link options. Link options allows you to select multiple URL parameters when you go ahead and share. We're going to go ahead and click the map to define the center of the map with a zoom level. So we're going to go ahead and choose where we want the map to open to, click on the button, and click in the middle. That's all you have to do. When you click the back arrow, you're going to see that this share link to this app has changed the actual URL. If you send this out to folks, it will zoom directly to where the map is right now. This is really helpful if you want to send people to a specific shelter. If you're looking at a national perspective, it's easier to zoom in to a specific incident. Finally, we're going to go over the add data component. Adding data is important if you want to do some analysis based on where to put shelters. On the add data piece, you could add from ArcGIS Online, a URL, or a file. But today, we're just going to do from ArcGIS Online. It's probably important to know what the weather looks like around your shelter, so let's go ahead and type in weather. You could add any of these to the map, but let's just go ahead and add USA Weather Watches and Warnings from Esri Live Feeds. Go ahead and click Add, and it will automatically add it to the map. Any layer you add to the map will automatically be added to your layer list, and you could see that it added all the USA Weather layers associated with that. So out here in Colorado, we're going to go ahead and look and see that the shelter that's open is actually not in any of the active weather watches and warnings. Again, really important to see what the weather looks like, especially on coastal areas for flooding. There's a lot of other cool tips and tricks within this tool, but we want the users to find out and go through it themselves. Again, if you have any questions, please contact admin at publicsafetygis.org, and thank you for using the Napsic Foundation Shelter Sandbox.